wild turkeys are regarded by a lot of people as one of the greatest conservation success stories of the 20th century. If you look back uh, right around the time of World War II, uh, we nearly lost this species. Um, estimates are that we had less than 5,000 turkeys in the state of Mississippi. And you know, after the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fishery, and Parks was formed in the 1930s, one of our uh, first objectives that the legislature tasked the agency with was restoring turkey populations. And it took many, many decades to do that. Uh, and so by the, the 1980s, Mississippi had one of the largest turkey populations in the country. Today, we're seeing issues around the state. There's certainly still really good turkey populations in a lot of Mississippi, but we recognize that there's, there's areas that the, the turkey numbers aren't what they were just a few decades ago. And so that's concerning to us, and we recognize that you know, we've got to kind of retool our conservation efforts and, and, and redefine what we're doing for this bird. And so there's a lot that goes into that. A, a lot of those projects, we partner with the National Wild Turkey Federation to conduct. Um, the National Wild Turkey Federation is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to uh, preserving and conserving the wild turkey and uh, hunting heritage around that bird. And so uh, they raise a lot of money at local banquets, uh, people who are, are dedicated to turkeys and, and interested in that species. And then that money gets put back on the ground in habitat projects or research that help ensure that we're doing the best we can for wild turkeys. My name is Casey Bauman. I'm the district biologist for the National Wild Turkey Federation here in Mississippi. And I partner a lot of times with the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks on projects um, to increase brood habitat for wild turkeys here in Mississippi because brood habitat is one of the um, factors that kind of limits our, uh, ourselves here in Mississippi in regards to the wild turkey. We want to work with partner agencies because uh, working with partners allows us to accomplish more on the ground management. Wild turkeys are a species that does best when you really actively manage the land. So a lot of the projects we're doing on some of our wildlife management areas are, are actively going in for that to, to, to do things like clear land to create a wildlife opening that they, we're then going to manage for uh, brood habitat to provide resources for hen turkeys or for the young turkeys. It may be timber management. That can be a lot of different things. That may be uh, selective thinning of, of certain stands to create a more rich understory for the turkeys. It may be something like prescribed fire where we're going in and we're burning off the existing understory to restart it to get fresh new growth out there that can benefit the turkeys by providing uh, brood habitat for, for young poults or uh, down the road nesting habitat for hens. So uh, there's a variety of different habitat techniques that we use uh, to manage for wild turkeys. On Kapai County WMA, we've done a lot of habitat work recently to help improve the wild turkey population. One recent project, we partnered with the National Wild Turkey Federation to enhance some, exi some existing wildlife openings and to create some new ones. These wildlife openings will be maintained in grasses, forbs, and legumes to help create really good turkey brood habitat. The hope is to basically allow a lot of um, different types of habitat, so diversity across the landscape. So the turkeys have um, brood habitat in relation to close nesting habitat and also um, foraging habitat. So they can get a vari wide variety of different habitats um, once this project is complete in a small area. Well, today we've got uh, turkeys using a bait site here at our Tala County study site. And, uh, we're going to be putting up the net, getting ready to try to trap birds tomorrow. For purposes of this project, we want to have hens and gobblers on both sites. So luckily, we got a group of hens coming in uh, that we're going to try to get. When we're doing research on turkeys, we catch them with a net propelled by rockets. Wild turkeys are a species that has been studied pretty extensively uh, over the last several decades. But new technology has allowed us to look at what they do and why they do it in, in, in kind of a new light. So we are currently partnering with Mississippi State University with their Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Aquaculture uh, in a project where we're using uh, GPS transmitters on Turkey. So these are transmitters that are, are extremely accurate and collect a location sometimes every 15 minutes. So it can literally show us exactly what the turkeys are doing um, minute by minute almost. The general uh, idea of this project is to try to understand uh, habitat selection here in, 
of the wild turkey here in Mississippi. Um, we've transmitted uh, birds in multiple sites across Mississippi, and we want to try to understand how birds utilize that the landscapes differently in different areas of the state. I, I track these uh, birds at night when uh, the birds are on the roost. I do have to get relatively close, and I, it's kind of hard when the birds are on the ground. Um, the, uh, the VHF signal is on from 6 to midnight, and I can go in and download, remotely download that data uh, directly onto a computer, and then I can go in and, and uh, later on and analyze and look at how, where the GPS points are and also look at the different uh, habitat characteristics that these birds use. Um, and then that way we can better understand the, the movement ecology of these birds. We're using the information that we gain from this project to help direct our management. So we're able to look at what the birds are doing while they're out on the landscape, in the woods, in the fields, and we're able to see the areas that they frequent the most, the areas that seem to be most important for their habitat use and and then we can uh, mimic those sort of areas in our management and we can prescribe prescriptions um, to whether it be a timber stand whether it be a field or opening um, that create those conditions that provide the best resources for them that we've learned about via the research we're doing on wmas we want to provide high quality turkey hunting opportunities on some WMAs, we recognize that we may need to evaluate the turkey season framework so that we can provide hunters with great experiences. So we are catching gobblers, giving them leg bands, and releasing them on site so that we can look at harvest rates on these WMAs. If a hunter shoots a banded gobbler, it's important that they call and let us know so that we can use that information. There is a number on the band to call and report it. Prescribed burning is one of the best things you can do for wild turkeys in upland type habitat. So what prescribed burning does is it comes in and it uh, eliminates a, a lot of the plant growth that's in the understory and sort of restarts it. So in the, in the aftermath of a, a prescribed fire, you get a really lush plant community coming back. And you know initially, uh, areas that are burned are heavily, heavily used by turkeys. We can see that through the birds that we have uh, tagged with the GPS transmitters. They highly select uh, recently burned areas. And then as the plant growth uh, kind of comes on at, after a few months, it, it creates really good brood habitat. So hens who have young poults are going to select areas that are you know, recently disturbed by something like prescribed fire and have a, a relatively young plant community. So they come in and that's where they take their, their broods, their young poults, uh, and they can um, be hidden in those kind of places. And they can also find a lot of insects and a lot of food source. Um, and then within a few years, the plant community kind of grows into uh, nesting habitat, and so it provides a great place for hens to lay their eggs. So prescribed fire uh, is one of the best tools we have, you know, to just all around create good turkey habitat in upland settings, particularly in pine stands. It's, it's an absolute essential habitat management tool. We're here today on Yakanukani Wildlife Management Area reviewing some recent habitat work. Yakanukani is almost all bottomland hardwoods along the Yakanukani River and like a lot of properties that are in that situation where you have you know several thousand acres of nothing but bottomland hardwoods that provides great resources during the fall and winter when acorns are dropping but the rest of the year uh, resources can be limited so from a turkey standpoint what you often see in, in properties like that is birds will use it heavily during the fall and winter but during the springtime which is when we like to hunt turkeys they kind of vacate out and go find other, other things. So what we've done with this project, which has been sponsored in part by the state chapter of the National Wild Turkey Federation, is to create some openings in the interior of the WMA. We're standing today in a spot that has recently been uh, mulched uh, by a forestry mulcher. Uh, the objective here was to take an existing roadway, expand it out, and create conditions where we can then go back and maintain this in an open area. So we may plant food plots here, we may just manage native vegetation, but the bottom line is it's breaking up the landscape, it's creating diversity, and it's putting habitat on the ground that otherwise would not be here. Another tool that we're using to help with our management of turkey statewide is the new game check system. Um, you know, historically we've, we've estimated what turkey harvest is sort of after the fact using, using statistics and surveys 
And there's a lot of, lot of flaws with that system. We recognize that we're, we're probably not capturing all the harvest with that. We're generally only capturing the harvest of licensed hunters in the, under the old system. But more importantly, we're not really getting information down to sort of the local level. So we can't really tell what county is doing well and what county's not. So the new game check system that was first implemented uh, in 2019 is allowing us to have instant information about what turkey harvest is around the state. And we're gonna be able to take that information and see trends down to the county level. So we'll be able to diagnose what parts of the state are doing well, what parts of the state may need uh, some help, may need extra habitat management, may need some sort of research or study to better understand what's going on in that part of the world. So Game Check is gonna be a, a instrumental tool in helping us better manage turkeys into the future. Our ultimate goal is to provide sustainable turkey populations. You know, that's a, that's a species that is really cherished by a lot of hunters in our state. Mississippi is really well known as a turkey hunting destination. You know, not only have we had uh, really strong per turkey populations for a lot longer than a lot of the country has, we're also home to a lot of nationally recognized turkey call makers, camouflage makers. Uh, you know, sort of the whole industry and culture surrounding turkey hunting is really a, a part of the sort of fabric of Mississippi's outdoor heritage. Hey, that's all the time we have for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time for more exciting adventures. Until then, I'm Pamela Weaver. And I'm Kevin Meacham. See, See you outdoors. Time is time we'll spend. We'll take